I finally got around to making the Ben 10 vs Dragon Ball video. Thank you, thank you, really the pleasure is all mine. I honestly should apologize because I think I kept you guys waiting like four, maybe five months on this one. So yeah, sorry about that. But I do have to say that I sincerely blame you guys for the horrible stuff I had to see when I googled Ben 10 images. Y'all do realize that Gwen is like a 10 year old girl, right? Like literally 10 years old. Just saying that some of you guys would fit right in with the My Hero Academia fandom for undisclosed reasons. You really should consider giving them a call sometimes on discord they're probably online anyway just hit them up i think you'll get along really really well but as i was saying today's video will be all about ben 10 and how far i believe he would be able to get in the dragon ball universe i doubt it will be really necessary for most of you but to start the video off i will be giving a very short summary on what the actual story of ben 10 revolves around ben 10 is all about the 10 year old boy ben tennyson one day ben manages to get his hands on an alien device called the omnitrix this device allows ben to transform into a variety of aliens and use their powers as his own. Throughout the series, Ben and his family use the powers of the Omnitrix to fight evil from both Earth and the far reaches of outer space. As Ben gets more experience with his powers, he also unlocks other aliens to add to his repertoire of usable transformations. And that does bring me to a pretty important point of interest for this video. As the people who suggested this video in the first place are assuredly aware of, there are two official continuities within the Ben 10 storyline. You have the classic continuity and you have the reboot continuity. The the classic continuity is the original continuity of Ben 10 that started airing back in 2005. It consists of Ben 10, Ben 10 Alien Force, Ben 10 Ultimate Alien and Ben 10 Omniverse. The reboot continuity consists of the new Ben 10 series that started airing in I believe 2016. This served as the fifth iteration of the original Ben 10 series and is very loosely and I really mean very very loosely based on the original classic continuity. Needless to say I will be looking at the classic continuity Ben for this video. Even though it might have seems pretty obvious to most of you, I still wanted to take some time to make this perfectly clear for the people who did not know anything about Ben 10 before clicking on this video. Another thing I need to put some emphasis on before we continue is that this video is about Ben 10 and Ben 10,000. This means no Ben 23, no Mad Ben, no Ken 10, no Gwen 10, no Albedo, no Kevin, etc. Just Ben 10 and his future self Ben 10,000 from the original classic continuity. And I know once again this may sound obvious, but I just really wanted to make sure that we are all on the same page throughout this video as best as I could. So let's take a look at Ben. I'm going to be completely honest here, without his Omnitrix, he can't do Jack. Against the fighters in Dragon Ball, he would just be completely fucked, just he wouldn't stand a chance. But then again, this video would not even exist if he did not have his Omnitrix to begin with. So what does this handy little device actually do? The Omnitrix works as follows. It is essentially a wearable database that can scan alien creatures Ben encounters to copy their DNA sequence and store them in the Omnitrix itself. He can then browse through the DNA sequences he has gathered and transform into an alien of choice at will. He then gains all of the powers and abilities of the alien he transforms in by perfectly recreating them. This allows Ben to have an incredible variety when it comes to combat strategies. Now correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but if we take only Ben 10 and Ben 10,000, I believe he has a total of 88 aliens he can transform into throughout the series. And this number does include like fusions and ultimate forms. And you can even make the number 89 if you count his ultimate Ben thingy where he artificially evolved his own DNA using the Ultimate Matrix. Little bit of information, the Ultimate Matrix is the upgraded slash perfected version of the Omnitrix. The Omnitrix itself was for all intents and purposes a prototype of the Ultimate Matrix. Now if I were to just go over each and every one of these aliens, we would be here until the literal heat death of the universe and that would be incredibly boring. So instead I will be discussing the aliens with which I am fairly confident he could ace the entire Dragon Ball universe. And I'm aware that this is somewhat unorthodox because I kind of just spoiled the actual result of the video here, but I just didn't want this video to be a 45 minute long rant where I go over 90% of the aliens Ben can use, which I don't even believe will get him anywhere. That just sounds incredibly redundant to me, so I just opted to go with this route. So like I said, I will just be going over the aliens that are just completely busted beyond belief and will help Ben beat pretty much anyone with maybe some exceptions depending 
depending on how you view their powers in comparison to one another. And honestly, if you're a Ben 10 fan, you'll probably agree. And if you're a Dragon Ball fan, you'll probably disagree. Let's be completely honest there. So to start off the list, let's just rip off the most painful band-aid and get it over with. Alien X is by far the biggest reason why Ben could beat pretty much anyone in Dragon Ball. So what can Alien X actually do? Literally anything. Alien X can just warp and mold time, space and reality to whatever it wishes it to be. He needs to fight Hit. He can just imagine Hit is a butterfly and it will be so. He needs to fight Ultra Instinct, Super Saiyan 4, Full Power, Kaioken times 20, Limit Breaker, Gogito. He can just imagine the guy is an infant with zero powers and it will be so. To be honest, Alien X is basically just Zeno on crack cocaine. He is literally capable of doing anything he damn well pleases. But it is not like he is without any weaknesses at all. It has been confirmed that there are certain types of planets in the Ben 10 universe where he can't survive due to like ecological reasons. He also has some troubles fighting against magic due to the way his powers work. And there are a couple of other things here and there he can just struggle with in general. But the biggest weakness Alien X has by far is the fact that he is comprised of three different types of minds. Like there's three people inside his head if that makes any sense to you. And all three minds must actually agree to an action before Alien X can carry it out and spoiler they don't always agree. But on the other hand when these three minds do agree on fighting the Dragon Ball verse I am pretty confident they could just wipe it clean out of existence if they damn well pleased. Another one of Ben's aliens that is just incredibly busted is Ghost Freak. So why is this guy busted? Ghost Freak can possess someone and just make them unalive themselves. Ghost Freak does not even need to realistically fight anyone. He can turn invisible, possess someone and just make them do all the work themselves. Now will this work on everyone? Probably not, let's be real. There are no doubt characters that would be able to shake this off. But you cannot sit here and deny the fact that this is a really broken ability to be able to just spam out. I am sure he would be able to get a lot of eliminations using Ghost Freak to basically cheat his way out of just dicey situations. Next up we have Jet Ray. Jet Ray can use Neuroshock Blast to shut down an enemy's entire nervous system. He can give Dragon Ball characters the Ujiro special from when he slapped Bucky into a damn seizure. One important thing to mention though is that this would more than likely not work on androids and Cell. In the show itself it was shown to be pretty unaffected against mechanical beings or like sort of androids in general like anything mechanical it didn't really work as well on. But still being able to turn someone into a vegetable is not a useless ability in the slightest. I'd wager he would be able to do some pretty funny damage with this one. Him just turning Vegeta into a drooling vegetable and preventing Trunks from ever being born just sounds really really funny to me and it would be a very funny way to beat that scenario. <laughs> So next up is Nanomech. He can shrink down and crawl up Goku's ass and just expand again. This is literally Ant-Man vs Thanos all over again. This is all I will say about Nanomech. Moving on. Next up we get to meet Clockwork. Now Clockwork is also a real piece of work. He can basically freely manipulate time in any way he wants. He could regress you back into your father's balls, he can age you until you turn to dust, he can chuck your ass into a timeline where you were born as a New York subway rat instead. If you get hit by Clockwork you are royally screwed because you can't fight time itself. Now, Hit could be an exception, but honestly, I don't think his time skip would be able to, you know, create a surefire counter to this guy. But I will mention that, you know, since Hit is also like a time manipulator, this could be a very interesting matchup. Next up we have Atomix. His powers are all about radiation. He is for all intents and purposes a walking nuclear reactor who can harness this power at will. He can shoot radioactive lasers, expel energy waves, etc. But he could also give the entire cast of Dragon Ball radioactive related diseases like for example cancers, thyroid disease, adenoma and cataracts. I know this sounds really really morbid and I don't like to joke about a serious illness like these ones, but it is a valid strategy to win in the long run. By using Atomix, Ben could theoretically cripple the cast of Dragon Ball by literally making them too sick to fight back. Now I'm obviously aware that this is a really unorthodox way to go about this but I just wanted to include this method of fighting because it could be a very realistic tactic. But I also want to mention that this is in no way meant to make fun of a serious disease or serious diseases in this case. Just making sure that I'm very transparent with this and we're on the same page that I don't mean to insult anybody with like diseases and stuff. That's just not me. But lastly we have his ultimate Ben for 
form. After a lot of trial and error, Ben found a way to simply use the powers of his aliens without transforming. This is basically a speed boost to all of his abilities because he removes the time he needed to transform into the you know, respective alien forms. So these are basically all of Ben's aliens, which I believe give him the power and honestly, let's be real, hacks to beat pretty much everyone in the Dragon Ball universe. Now, are his wins guaranteed? Obviously they're not. Like, duh. Alien X can literally debate with itself too much, just preventing it from doing anything in the first place. Ghost Freak's mind possession could possibly be undone by sheer will. You know, example being Majin, Vegeta and Babidi. Jet Ray can be dodged if the opponent is fast enough. Nano Mech can be sensed and discovered in a similar way Piccolo sensed that small dude in the tournament of power and 17 managed to beat him, and Clockwork and Adam X could be dodged as well. My point is that if Ben can use these guys effectively in combination with his other aliens, which were not mentioned in this video, he could 100% have a chance at winning everything. It all depends on how open you are to Dragon Ball characters losing, to be honest. Like, if you are the type to argue, um, Dragon Ball speed and power hacks nullify every argument you can possibly make. <laughs> Obviously, you will not be open to Ben possibly being able to win. But I personally decided to have an open mind for today's video and think that with some luck and him playing his cards right, Ben can actually join Sonic and Kirby in clearing the entire verse. And that brings me to the tierless placement for today's hero. I am going to place Ben in the uppermost tier because I think he deserves to be in there. But I am very curious as to what you guys' opinion is on this versus. Did I rank Ben way too high or do you think I still somehow undersold him? Let me know what you think in the comments down below and we can talk about it like grown adults. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for taking the time out of your busy day to watch my videos. It really does mean a lot more than you might think. If you liked today's video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment with your thoughts to help promote the channel. Work hard, study well and eat and sleep plenty. And I will see you all again in the next video. Peace out.